Good afternoon, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God, hello, hi. It's about six minutes to 3 p.m. my time here in Illinois. Uh, my wife and I just got back from um, doing the Lord's work. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And I'm um, going to be addressing a question that was asked of me by a beloved brother. And I'm going to preface this with a, a question of my own. Hey, you easy believism devils. If you're not born again, then what are you? A new creature in Christ Jesus, huh? Really? But then again, the changed life is optional, right? <laughs> you're still saved, right? Because you, you just believe and you, you jump over scriptural repentance and brokenness. Uh, you know, brokenness, contrition, fear of the Lord. You really hate calling on his name because you guys are way too good to humble yourselves and call on the greater, right? No, you're, you're just good. You're just way too good for that, to humble yourselves and call upon the name of the Lord. No, you have to do it yourself by you just believing, right? So there again, I ask you, if you're not born again, then what are you? Okay. That's a little bit of a rhetorical question on to you. It really is. Um, have any of you ever heard that uh, being, being born again is only for the Jews? What? People actually say that. Actually, people actually believe that. Now, if you are someone who is ignorant, not knowing better, then that's all good. Uh, we're going to go through this. But see... Those who push that being born again is only for the Jewish people <laughs> are the same ones who tell you in order to be saved you just believe calling on the name of the Lord is a work a uh, changed life doesn't have to happen it's optional they want to keep you comfortable in your sins Okay? They're for church buildings. I.e., what am I getting at? Easy believism heretics. These are the same people who also say that <laughs> Romans 9 through 11 is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble in the Pauline epistles. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, you, you easy believism devils. I, you guys are a piece of work. I'll tell you what. It, it's sad because what? See, you devils, and look at how you do your videos. Uh, very entertaining, aren't they? They're very amusing, aren't they? And what does amuse mean, dear friend? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, watch some of their videos. That what? They don't teach nothing. You can't teach nothing because you don't have the Spirit of God in you. Okay? You, dear friends, you uh, easy believism heretics, are banking on the scriptural illiteracy of the few, of the many, excuse me, I should say, of the many. You're banking on people not knowing the scriptures well, so you can come in with your poison and dilute people who would actually, who do actually want to come unto the Lord to be saved. You, dude, you're, you're going to pay such a price for your evil wickedness. But you don't care. Keep, keep smiling there, buddy. <laughs> keep smiling. This is your best life now. Yeah, keep smiling there, hotshot. Go right ahead. <laughs> Up the dosage there, buddy. Okay? Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. And turn with me to the book of John. John chapter 3. Now, let's get to some truth here. Paul and the Pauline epistles. If you don't, if you are ignorant of this, okay, we're going to go through this. This is going to be a very tedious video. Okay, we're going to be tedious in this one. Okay, but Paul and his epistles that he has written 
from Roman on to Philemon, okay? Uh, I don't personally believe that Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. That's me. You argue with me all day if you want. That's, that's just me. Uh, we do know who wrote the scriptures, though. The Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. You know the Holy Ghost? The Lord is that spirit. He's the one who wrote the scriptures through man's hand. Okay? So we know that. Okay? But anyway, from um, Romans unto Philemon, Paul never verbalizes the words, the phrase, born again. It appears three times in the scriptures. Twice in the book of John and once in Peter. So see these easy believism heretics who, want, who desperately want you poor people to believe that no changed life happens after salvation or rather that it's optional. See, y'all devils, you have a real, real, real big problem with that changed life. And you fall back onto lame excuses. Well, God knows my heart and stuff like that. You're pathetic. You devils. You're devils. You are wicked devils. You're pathetic. Absolutely pathetic. But see, this being born again is only for the Jews is a stepping stone to get into deeper heresy that is attributed with easy believism, uh, hyper dispensationalism. Okay? Hyper dispensationalism. They call themselves dispensational, but salvation from beginning to end is faith alone. <laughs> You. Okay? Salvation changes in the dispensations, you lying devil. Okay? You can send all your brethren of your order after whoever you want to. It's not going to change the truth. Salvation is what changes in the dispensation there, hotshot. And you know what's scary about you? And keep smiling there, buddy. You know what's scary about you? You know that. You, you, you're not ignorant. You're not ignorant. You know that. But you are purposely deceiving people. I would love to see you truly get saved. What a, what a, what, oh wow. And turn on your order? Wow, man. I'll tell you what. I, I, I'll extend this to you. If the Lord ever saves you before we, the church of the living God, get uh, redeemed, because you're going to be left here, by the way. But if, you know, before the Lord redeems his body and you truly, genuinely are saved of our Lord Jesus Christ, and you want someone to go to to expose your order get a hold of me get a hold of me okay get a hold of me we'll do a live stream I know you like those we'll do a live stream together get saved of our Lord Jesus Christ turn on your order become an enemy unto the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ and I'll have a live stream with you. So you can spill your guts of your order that I hope that you get rescued from and truly saved. Because you're going to be left behind, dear friend. God help you. So, John chapter 3. Let's read John chapter 3, verses uh, 1 on to verse... Oh, 1 on to verse 13, okay? Please follow me along in the scriptures. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night. And that's a stigma that's going to stick with Nicodemus. Uh, the same came to Jesus by night, meaning that he was afraid to come to him openly, but he did it in secret. 
when you encounter when you encounter the Lord Jesus Christ as a broken contrite sinner and in fear call upon the name of the Lord and beg him for his mercy and forgiveness um, things change it just happens it's not real it's not an option it's not really an option people you know why because the Lord will be in you and see if you ignore and quench the spirit as someone who is truly saved your life is going to be miserable so you're saved born again and uh, resisting the whole the Holy Ghost and quenching the spirit things are going to change for the worse but see your life is going to change it's just going to happen. Okay? And those who dispute that have no change themselves. They're lost. Poor creature you. Let's continue. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God. For no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Singular, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. We are going to see in this context, the wording of kingdom of God is meant for spiritual. Because kingdom of God in context could mean spiritual or the actual physical literal kingdom of heaven. Okay, kingdom of heaven is the actual physical literal kingdom of heaven which only appears in the book of Matthew. Okay, but kingdom of God can mean either or. It's defined by the context and we are going to see by the context that he is definitely talking about the spiritual being born again. Okay, so let's continue. Nicodemus saith unto him, <laughs> How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily I say unto thee. Singular. Remember, thee is singular. That's going to play an important part here. Except a man be born of water. Water. Signifying what? A natural birth. Born of water. It is not talking about baptism, Catholic. Pentecatholic. Okay? It is not. Being born of water. Beg your pardon for this bluntness. Uh, remember, um, you remember the phrase for a woman who is with child when she is about to be delivered? The, the phrase, her water broke beg your pardon but you know that phrase yeah uh, well you think that comes from genius I'm not talking to you the ignorant please forgive me okay I'm not talking to you the ignorant I'm talking to you devils okay where do you think that comes from verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water naturally born and of the capital S spirit capital S signifying God himself he cannot enter into the kingdom of God that which is born of flesh is flesh now hold up flesh is flesh put your little finger there and look up at verse 5 verily verily I say unto thee except a man be born of water verse 6 that which is born of the flesh is flesh okay natural birth Flesh is flesh. Flesh is flesh. Signifying what? Water. Let's continue. And that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, is lowercase spirit. Okay? You have the Holy Ghost within you. Okay? He imparts himself to you upon him saving you. Okay? Okay? So... So, wait a minute. And that which is born of the Spirit, capital S, and up in verse 5, except a man be born of water, flesh is flesh, 
and of the capital S Spirit. And that which is born of the Spirit, capital S Spirit, is Spirit. Okay? Okay? So, a natural birth and one being born of the Spirit. Okay? Let's continue. Marvel not that I said unto thee, singular, here we go, ye, plural, and in this conversation, as far as we know, it was just Nicodemus and Jesus. Could there have been other people there? Yes. Scripture does not say anything of other people being around him. Okay? So we are to assume that this was just Jesus and Nicodemus. Why would he say ye? Oh, so people like you and I today could know Okay? Marvel not that I said unto thee, sing, uh, singular, speaking to Nicodemus, ye, everybody, must be born again. Born again. And see, these lost, easy believers and devils, they come up with, the, they, they use this. Verse 4, Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Why would they say that? Because they themselves are not saved. Let's continue. The wind bloweth where it listeth. Wind. God breathe. Signifying what? Spirit. Okay. And thou hearest the sound thereof. But canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the capital S spirit okay Nicodemus answered and said unto him how can these things be Nicodemus wasn't regenerated he wasn't a saved man okay he's speaking to the father himself he doesn't know that and, and, and you look at this Jesus answered and said unto him I, I just picture this uh, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I speak unto thee. Verily, verily, I say unto thee. Excuse me. We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? Hold the place here. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> Verses 12 to the close of the chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Okay. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. Now note the lowercase s is there. Imparting, okay? An impartation, impartition, okay? He's giving, all right? That's what that means. That we might know the, okay. Now we have, now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God. That we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Spiritual things, the Holy Ghost, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. The Lord is that Spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Make sure you read the context. Okay, it's quite plain. Okay? Okay? Comparing spiritual things. The Lord within you with spiritual things see a lot of these easy believism devils they have a spiritual thing here the scriptures but they don't have god within them they're liars and people they are damning so many of you to hell because how comfortable are you in your sin because according to them you just believe change life don't need it You want that, don't you? 
You want your ear to be itched. You want to live as the world. Why? <laughs> is, is, is that worth it? <laughs> Keep smiling, buddy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Silly. Okay. We'll go back to Second Corinthians, okay? Okay. Which things, uh, verse 13 again, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spirit, spiritual. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. You're right, because who judges us? The church of the living God, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? He judges us. But he that is spiritual, how are you true? You run into these people, well, I'm not religious, I'm spiritual. Yeah, yeah, the spirit you got is the spirit of the devil. That spirit of Antichrist. Okay? No. But he that is spiritual, those of us who are saved, born again, and converted, with the church of the living God, judgeth all things. How do we do that? Oh, because we have the standard, the authorized version of the scriptures. We have a book that we can judge things off of. First of all, starting with ourselves. Okay? Verse 15 in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. But he that is spiritual judgeth all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Why is that? Because he lives in us. Okay? Go back to John. Okay? Picking up at verse 10. We're going to read verse 10 again. Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou a master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto you, unto thee, excuse me, we speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you of earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. Okay? So, there we see in the book of John the two appearances to the reference of being born again. And as we have seen, verse 8, the wind bloweth where it listeth. That wind is referring, uh, he's referring on to the spirit. Okay? And thou hearest not the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh. And whither it goeth, so is every one that is born of the capital S Spirit. Okay? So, being born again. First, someone has to be born of water. You know, uh, a woman with child, her water breaks. Okay? Alright? Born of water. Okay? Natural birth. That which is first natural, then afterward is spiritual, okay? You gotta be first. First, you gotta be born, okay? Second, you have to be born again of the Spirit, okay? Born again of the Spirit, okay? He's talking spiritual, all right? Okay? Now, let's look at the second appearance of born again. First Peter. Chapter 1. I've run into this personally. <laughs> and um, actually, you know, um, this is not that difficult to, um, as, we will, as you will see, not that difficult to debunk. But you got to remember, the ignorance of the scriptures is one of Satan's greatest weapons. And so many are out there ignorant of the scriptures 
No, they got a Bible, see. And those who are telling, uh, feeding them this poisonous, easy believism teach absolutely nothing from the scriptures. Okay? Oh, you, you say a verse or two. Maybe even a half of a third of a chapter or something. You can't teach anything. Just keep smiling. <laughs> oh, it's just this. <laughs> Are you going to be laughing all your way to hell? I pity you. I truly do. I truly, truly do. I do pity you. I do pity you. Okay. First Peter chapter 1. Let's, let's begin at verse 12. And read all the way to the close of the chapter. Okay? I told you, this video is going to be tedious. Okay? Unto whom it was revealed, uh, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 12, unto the close of the chapter, that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you, with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not children of disobedience, okay? Not children of disobedience. A ch a children of disobedience are those who Hear the gospel, the true gospel, and reject it. Okay? Children of disobedience, as referred to in the scriptures, uh, a child of wrath, those are not those of the church of the living God. Okay? It's, those are being referred to as lost people. Let's continue. Okay? As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance. Hold your place here. Romans chapter 12, verses, you ought to know, verses 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Okay, go back to 1 Peter, picking up at verse 15. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Holy, separate, other, okay? Separate than, other than. We are to be holy. Separate and other than that. Separate and other than these fake, no, from these Christians, they're not fake. They're Christians, all right. Yeah. Yeah, we are to be separate and other than that. Okay? Let's continue. Because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, and the Father is our Lord Jesus Christ, okay, who without respect of persons, Judgeth every uh, judgeth according to every man's work. Pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, as silver and gold, from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Okay? If I can remember, I'll try to link the Calvinism video that uh, the Lord had me to do a while ago. This is not talking about elect and non-elect and all that nonsense, okay? Check out that video, okay? Verse 21. Who by him do believe in God that raised him up from the dead, being raised from the dead. Mm. More on that in a second, okay? And gave him glory, 
that your faith and hope might be in God. Seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the capital S spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the lowercase w, word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Now, before we go back to John chapter 3, okay? For all flesh is as grass. Read Isaiah chapter 40 sometime about this. Very good cross-reference with this. And all the glory of man as the flower of grass, the grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Lowercase w. There are only seven occurrences of the capital W word. Every single one of them is referring unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? But the word of the Lord endureth forever. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Okay? Now. Hold your place here and go back to John chapter 3. You must see this. Okay? John chapter 3. You easily believe as in devils irritate me. Which you like to try to do on purpose. I know that. But uh, you guys are... See, there's no fear of God in you. You have no love for people. You just want to agitate and cause problems. And damn as many people as you can to hell, uh, serving your father, the devil. Okay, you guys are disgusting. You're not. You're not presenting the true gospel, nor the actual Lord Jesus Christ of the Scriptures onto these people. God help you. God have mercy on you. I do hope you truly get saved. I truly do. I truly do. John chapter three again. Okay? Verses 5 and 6. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water, which is referring to natural birth, and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Referring unto the uh, spiritual. He's not talking about the kingdom of heaven, because you read verse 8, there's your answer, okay? That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Flesh, water, flesh, water, water, flesh, water, flesh. And that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Okay? Okay? Now go back to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 23 on to verse 24. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible. Because your body is going to rot. Your body is going to be corrupt once, you, once your spirit and soul leave your body. Uh, your body is going to rot. Okay? And the, the uh, process of rotting, okay, does not really begin until after three days. Remember Lazarus was dead in the tomb four days and stinketh, okay? There's some science for you, by the way, okay? Let's continue. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, okay? The corruptible seed. The seed of man, the incorruptible, that seed that is in you is the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, okay, that dwells within you. For his seed remaineth in him. That's uh, 1 John chapter 3 or 4, I believe, okay? Go find it. About where in 1 John he says, because his seed remaineth in him, referring on to the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit, okay? Okay? For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. For all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man as the flower of uh, glass. Here for a moment, 
gone. Gone. Okay? The grass withereth, and the flower thereof falleth away. F falleth away. Okay? So, there you see the three occurrences of being born again. And it is talking about a spiritual rebirth from being what? Why did not Paul use the phraseology born again? I don't know. He didn't have to. Okay? Remember, Paul was the apostle unto the who? The Gentiles. And Peter was the apostle unto the who? The Catholics. No. Shut up. The Jews. Okay? Okay? Does that phraseology in and of itself has something to do with the Jews who require a sign? I don't know. But as we are going to see, being born again, a spiritual rebirth, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, Paul definitely spake on that. He just did not use the words born again. He didn't need to. Okay? Let's look at this. Romans chapter 6. Um, the Lord has led me to do quite a bit of stuff on Romans chapter 6. So I'm not going to really get too deep into it. But, okay. Romans chapter 6 is addressing specifically those who are saved. Romans 1, 2, and 3 up to verse 18. Um, uh, well, 1, 2, and 3 are there for us, the church of the living God, to present unto the lost. You know, bringing them along the Romans road of salvation. Okay? Um, and by the way, you devils, uh, in Romans chapter 10, where it says, uh, where is that? Where is that? Um, verse 14. How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? It says believe. Shut up. Just shut up. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Because faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Verse 17. Okay. And how shall they hear without a preacher? Someone to tell them. Okay. Okay. Verse 14 is talking about those who speak, who preach the word of God. You devils. Okay. And you, and you people, please, or being duped by these devils. The, the, verse 14 in Romans chapter 10 is talking about those who preach. Okay? That's what that means. Go back to Romans. Okay? Romans chapter 6. Okay? Romans chapter 6, verses 1 on to verse 14. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Go ahead, continue in sin because you're saved, right? And your life doesn't have to change. It day. Don't worry about it. You're saved. You're saved. Yeah, you, you should, but hey, don't worry about it. It's not a requirement or anything. It doesn't, get, it doesn't just happen. You can go on living in your sin. See, that's what these people are teaching you. Okay? <laughs> Keep smiling. That's what they're teaching you. Okay? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? And hey, uh, uh, where was sin relegated to? God, tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Where was sin relegated to? Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? Now, you might be thinking that's a water baptism. There are two types of baptism. One where you actually get dunked and baptism, which is baptism of identification. How do you know it's that? Uh, know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death? 
identified with his death. Why is that? See, when someone is water baptized, the, um, the uh, symbolic gesture of it is you go down in the water, okay, and then you come up newness of life, okay? You go down, there's your death, and you come up new, okay? Water baptism is not required for salvation, okay? Water baptism is an outward expression of an inner conversion, okay? You do not, Catholic, Pentecatholic, Care Catholic, water baptism is not a requirement for your salvation, okay? Acts 2.38 is not the gospel, you devils, okay? Okay, let's continue. Therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the, of the Father, even so we also sh should walk in newness of life. That's where you people, you devils, have the problem with. See, if someone is born again, Something has to die if you're born again, right? Because what did Nicodemus, how can, some, how can you go into uh, your mother's womb being old? Huh? How can you do that? And how can these things be? Okay. Something has to be dead. Something of you, when the Lord saves you, dies. What is it? What is it? The old man. The old man. The Adam. The old man. The old Adam. And see, when you die to that, when the Lord saves you, when you come to him broken of your self-righteousness, contrite, sorry because you are the one who put him on the cross. Okay? And in fear of his righteous judgment of you going to hell, you call it, the calling on the name of the Lord just happens. It, <laughs> it, 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 the fear of the Lord will drive you to call upon the name of the Lord. You dispute that like all these easy believism devils do, you're not saved. Because you have not come to the Lord on his conditions. But you're a thief and a robber and you go up some other way. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Okay? And the symbology. Going under the water. Your burial. Being brought up. Okay? Symbolic. Symbolic. But what takes place. The old man dies. What happens to it? It's relegated to the flesh. See. Romans 8, verses 1 under verse 4. We'll read that today, just, just to do so, okay? Let's continue. For if we have been... Uh, okay, let's read verse 4 again. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead... By the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk in newness of life. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, death unto the world, death unto ourselves, okay? We shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection, a new creature. So, in, some, in order for someone to be born again, something has to die, right? 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 Come on! Come on! Come on! You easy believism heretics, come on! You have to. If you, you want to keep your facade up, you have to admit that. Okay? I mean, come on! Come on, man! You deny that. Come on! Come on, 
in order for you to make it look like you're of the church of the living God and you're not, you're all lost devils, you have to at least acknowledge that with what we're looking at, okay? In order for something new to begin, something old has to die, right? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, no, you're not going to admit that, are you? <laughs> what more proof do you people need that these easy believers and heretics are lost devils? Let's continue. Reading from verse 5 again. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. You know, you read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 about the uh, when we are redeemed, the catching away, where uh, immortality will put, or where this mortal will put on immortality. Also in, uh, what is that, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4? Okay? Okay? For something new to begin, something old has to die. Okay? Paul was talking about being born again. He just didn't say being born again. Okay? Let's continue. Right? <laughs> Verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. The body of sin. Catholic, hey, come on. Where was sin relegated to? Oh, no, 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 because uh, you, you take so uh, such great offense of the skin suit, right? Which proves, because you are so adamant against that, to defend that proves that you're a Catholic. We'll, we'll look at Romans chapter 8 again and just bury the, the nail into your coffin on that, okay? You're a Catholic. Let's continue. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. Meaning you don't have to give yourself over to your sin. For with every temptation, God will provide a way of escape. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, I believe that is. Go find it. Okay? With every temptation... He will make a way of escape so you can bear it. Okay? Let's continue. Now, if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more, death hath no more dominion over him. For in that he died, he died once. Okay? For, that, for in that he died, he died unto sin once, beg your pardon for that, once, okay? Not at every Mass, Catholic. But in that he liveth, he liveth unto God. Okay, look at verse 10 there. Look at that. Don't look at me. Look at verse 10, okay? Being born again, not of corruptible seed. That which is of flesh is flesh. That which is of spirit is spirit. Okay? So, for in that he died, you and I, Church of the Living God, we died to our old man, to our self-righteousness, okay? We died. We are dead to sin. Yes, we are, okay? That doesn't mean that we don't sin as the Church of the Living God, okay? That doesn't mean that. No, we, we have the option. We don't have to sin because we have been set free from the power of it. But see, there again, God is not holding a gun at your head, neither is the devil. Because our spirit and soul are housed within this lovely skin suit that you Catholics love to defend, okay? Our spirit and soul are here in the skin suit, okay? The sagging suit of flesh that corrupts over time, okay? Okay, so look at verse 10. 
For in that he died, he died unto sin once, but in that he liveth, he liveth unto God, being born again. You die to that, to yourself, to that, to your pet sins, and you live unto God. How can you live unto God as the same unregenerate person, but yet you believe and you think you're saved? That's nonsense. That's heresy. God doesn't save you so you can go on living just like this, like the world, dear friend. Please. Dude, life is too short for you to fall for these devil twits, okay? God does not want you to live in your sin. <coughs> God wants you to be <coughs> separate, holy, other, not mingling with the world, to be like the world, to win the world, or any nonsense like that, okay? Please, please consider this, okay? Let's continue. Verse 11, Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lusts thereof. And if you read Romans chapter 7, you read and will learn that the greatest of the church of the living God struggled mightily with his sins. Paul's greatest sin was his pride. His pride. The Holy Ghost warned him, hey, don't go to Jerusalem. He did anyway. Okay? He was given a, th he was given a thorn in his flesh as I have been given a thorn in my flesh. Why? To keep us humble. For we to know that his grace is sufficient for you. That his strength is made perfect in your weakness. We all have a thorn in the flesh in some sorts. What's yours? Okay? But see, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it in the lust thereof. Okay? That doesn't mean that you're not going to sin. You are going to sin. Okay? Remember, a thought can be a sin. Jesus said, If anyone looketh upon a maid and lust after her in his heart, he has already committed adultery with her already. Okay? Adultery, fornication, those are sins. A thought can be a sin, dear friend. And also, saying this nonsense that you don't sin anymore, um, like that devil uh, John Boshoff who's in hell right now used to say no I don't sin anymore you're lying lying is a sin okay you're going to sin okay but see he's going to show you a way to escape okay now verse 12 let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body let not sin control you but you are going to sin our job as the church of the living God is to be separate, holy from that and to live according to this. The more we align our lives with the scriptures, the better our lives are going to be in health, in testimony, in all areas, okay? But see, you get away from this and just speak on feelings. <laughs> keep smiling. You keep and speak on feelings. Yeah. You've divorced yourself from the scriptures. And you're trusting in your heart. And what does it say in Jeremiah 17, verses 9, on to verse 11? Verse 13. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin. But yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. 
Then he says in verse 15, What then? Shall we sin because we are not under the law but under grace? God forbid. Go ahead and sin because God's grace covers, covers it all. What? No. Okay. I've expounded on that before. I'm not going to get into it. Okay. But in Romans chapter 6 especially, okay, verses 100 verse 14, he's describing being born again even though he is not saying being born again, okay? Now, beg your pardon, go to Romans chapter 8, verses 1 under verse 4. Therefore, there is, there is, excuse me, there is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, like all these easy believers and heretics do, but after the capital S Spirit, after our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who lives in you. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son, come on, my dear friend, read this with me. Read it with me, please. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. The flesh profiteth nothing. Satan's temptation was aimed at the flesh. Not at Jesus Christ, because God cannot sin, but the flesh. God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. You wicked devil. You wicked devils. The flesh profiteth nothing. The flesh of Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh, that flesh was sinful. It could corrupt. It was the flesh that Satan tempted. You look at his temptations. They were all temptations of the flesh. Yes, the flesh is sinful, dear friend. And someone who gets all up in arms uh, and say, defends the flesh, guess what? You want to know who their God is? A little round cookie named the Pucharist. That's their God. That's the mark of a Catholic. Okay? Verse 4. That the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. But after the Spirit, being born again. Okay? Read Romans chapter 7 on your own time, by the way. To see the greatest of the church of the living God struggled with sin and did sin. He did sin. Yes, he did. Okay? Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. Verses 1 on to verse 5. These aren't all of them, by the way, once we get through them. These aren't all of them, by the way. Okay? But we are going to drive home this point. That being born again, while the phrase born again was only said in John and Peter, but being born again is something that Paul taught. He just never said being born again, okay? You are going to have absolutely zero doubt of that, Lord willing, by the time this is over. The only way you're going to have doubt of that is if you ain't one of us, of the Church of the Living God, okay? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 1 under verse 5. And I, brethren, when I came to you, 
came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I determined not to know anything among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And I was with you in weakness and in fear and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom. Yeah, keep smiling there, boy. Keep smiling. Oh, it's so funny. Oh, yeah, your heresy is so wicked. Yeah, big smile. Big smile. Big smile. Come on. Big smile there, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom but in demonstration of the Spirit and of power. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. And see, the easy believism heretic is using the wisdom of men. You know how you know? Hey, do some exposition through the scriptures. Compare scripture with scripture. Oh, no, but see, your audience... They can't handle too much scripture, can they? No. No. And what scripture they do use, they use it to attack. And take out of, you know, y'all like to use the word context all the time, but you have no concept of what it is. Okay? But look at verse 2. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. And what did we read in Romans chapter 6? Okay, uh, Galatians chapter 2, Galatians chapter 2, okay, whoops, Galatians chapter 2, you ought to know where we're going, okay, Galatians chapter 2, verses 20 on to verse 21, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And you are sealed with the Holy Ghost. So what, does that mean you have two persons living within you or something? <laughs> no. One God, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? You have the Father living within you. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Okay? Crucifixion. What? is the inevitable result of being crucified. Come on, what is it? It's death. So, something has to die in order for something to be <laughs> reborn, to be a new creature, being born again. See? I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved, past tense, loved me and gave himself for me. But see, being of the church of the living God, God's present tense love is for you because you are his, uh, part of his body. Okay? You are part of him. Okay? I do not frustrate the grace of God. How do you do that? By quenching the Spirit. By ignoring God, our Father, our Lord, Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that spirit that dwells in you. Okay? You don't have three people living within you. That satanic uh, trinity, by the way. You do not have three people within you. Okay? You have one God that we serve, who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body. You have him within you. Okay? I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, i.e. flesh, carnal ordinances, talks about in the book of Hebrews, the law, carnal, fleshly ordinances, then Christ is dead in vain. Okay? But now, Galatians chapter 5, verses 16 on to verse 26. This I say then, Walk in the capital S spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. How do you do that 24 hours a day, seven days a week? We have, a, we have the instructions on how to do so, 
But see, can we do it? No, not all the time. See, because it says there, This I say, walk in the Spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. But see, we stumble. We choose to sin. We sin. We're, that's unavoidable. There is no such thing as sinless perfe uh, perfection in this life. Okay? We need to be holy, separate than, other than, and to get as much of our sins out of our lives. Okay? Because the catching away of the church of the living God or of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble could come any moment. It really could. Okay? I believe that it will be relegated sometime into the spring, but it could happen at any moment. And it's important that we get that sin out of our lives and walk according to the scriptures for a testimony. It's very important. Remember, we are ambassadors, ministers of reconciliation. Okay, let's continue. <clears throat> this I say then, walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit. And the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. Right there, Paul is telling you, it's like, you should walk in the flesh. But, because your spirit and soul are still in the skin suit, the flesh, that battle, and you're going to sin. Paul never preached sinless perfectionism, by the way. Okay? He never did. Read Romans chapter 7, people. Okay? Read that. Okay? Verse 18. But if ye be led of the Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery. Being with someone other than who your father is. Okay? Cheating on someone you love. Fornication. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. Envyings. Murders. Drunkenness, revel revelings, and such like. Of the which I tell you before, of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Referring to the spiritual. Why is that? Because, oh, but they're not saved. See, you and I, as the church of the living God, we can do any one of these things. But see, since we have God within us, that chastisement is going to be so horrific. I know. So does my wife. So do any one of you of the church of the living God. Okay? And if you keep resisting him, quenching the spirit, 1 Corinthians chapter 5, to deliver such a one on this, to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that the spirit may be saved in the day of the Lord Jesus. See, this is your problem. This is my problem. The flesh. And while we're here, still here, we're going to struggle with it every second of the day. Okay? Let's continue. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. What is the end result of crucifixion? Death. And when you die, but yet come back to life, uh, born again, If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. 
Let us not be desirous of vain glory, glory that only passes for a fleeting moment and dances and struts its stuff around the stage, only to be heard no more. That's the tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, signifying uh, nothing. I love Shakespeare. How about you? <laughs> Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. And is that not what you easy believism devils do constantly seek to provoke? Yeah. Go to 2 Corinthians now. Of course we have to go to this. Okay? Of course we have to go to this. And like I told you, like I told you, it's the easy believism heretic who will tell you being born again is only for the Jew. Uh, Paul described what being born again is. He just never said it. Okay? Don't let these easy believism devils fool you, beguile you, please. They're lying to you. They are trying to get you to be left behind and take the mark of the beast to damn you to hell. Okay? They want to keep you comfortable in your sins. That's all. That's why they, they do weird things to the scriptures. This one's just for the Jews. It's not for us. It's just by, it's, it's devilish. This wisdom does not come from our Father in heaven. It is sensual, earthly, devilish. Yea, hath God said. Okay? Okay? But of course, we have to come to this. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 unto the close of the chapter. Okay? Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. He's passed away. He's gone on. Old things are passed away. Dead. Behold, all things are become new. B born again. Die. Born again. It's the same thing. Okay? Paul is preaching a new birth. A new life. <coughs> a changed life. Because the old man dies and the new is born again. Okay? And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. We're ambassadors. Now, now hold up. These people who preach against scriptural repentance, brokenness of your self-righteousness, contrition, godly sorrow, being sorrowful that it's your fault that he died for you. He died for you because of what you did. And preach, and preach against calling upon the name of the Lord, the lesser calling upon the greater, which is a result of fear. Okay, you call upon the name of the Lord. Okay, these guys preach against that. And what, uh, and who are they being ambassadors onto? That man of sin, the son of perdition, who will eventually be revealed after you and I Church of the Living God get redeemed. Okay? Okay? <laughs> you gotta beware of these devils, man. You have to beware. These guys are sick. You wanna tell me the YouTube Easy Believism heretics, they're, our, they're the ambassadors of Christ. <laughs> keep, keep smiling. Keep smiling. Yeah. God help you wicked devils. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. God can't sin. That we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Okay? 
Now, go back to Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 12. <laughs> I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that hath, from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. A repentant less, sorrowful less, <laughs> or unsorrowful, a gospel of no fear, but just something that you do on a whim, by persuasion of man's words that entice you. Which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. I'm not going to give you the satisfaction of naming you people. But though we or an angel from heaven preach another, any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be anathema, accursed. Okay? Oh, like the angel Moroni that came to the Freemason Joseph Smith. Yeah. As we said before, so say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. You're accursed, you easy believism devils. For do I not persuade men or God? Or do I speak to please men, which easy believism heretics do? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant, servant of Christ. You easy believism heretics, you're very popular, ain't you? Yeah, because the false gospel and the the uh, that uh, the the Christ that you preach doesn't require anything. Just a boop. Yeah. Of course the lost world's going to gobble all that up, especially when you uh, preach against a changed life. Oh, you mean I can go to heaven and live and play video games, get drunk every night, snort cocaine, cheat on my wife, not be married, engage in this and that? Woe be to you, you easy believers and devils. Verse 10 again. For do I not persuade men or God? Or do I seek to please men like easy believers and heretics do? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. It's not man's gospel. Easy believism is man's gospel. Why? Its center is the flesh. You know that little round cookie called the Pucharist? Easy believism is a religion of flesh. That's all it is. For I neither received it of man, a lot of these guys get this from the Jesuits, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Again, these easy believers and devils, people, they teach you a religion of flesh. It's what it's all about. No mortification, no change, no, no brokenness, no contrition, no fear of the Lord, no calling upon the name of the Lord, uh, no changed life. Wow. Wow. No wonder you uh, people who are lost just flock to all these people in droves. What is that? Um, well, uh, wide is the way that leadeth on to destruction, but narrow is the way that leadeth on to life, and few there be that find it. Go to Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 4. And on to my dearly beloved brother. I hope this helps. <laughs> Okay, Ephesians chapter 4, verses 17 to the close of the chapter. 
And, and what this, you know, being born again is just for the Jews. It's just another way to skirt the changed life that comes of anyone who is truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Okay? This is, that's all this is. Okay? That's all it is. These devils are desperate to take everything away of the truth and just leave this skeleton of lies for you to ingest. Yes, belief is a big part of your salvation. Yes. Yes. But how do you arrive onto that belief? What happens after that belief? You know, uh, let me put it to you like this. Okay, you go out in front of and stand in front of a Mack truck and let him hit you. Um, something's going to change, isn't it? That's not going to be something forgotten, is it? Something is going to have to change. When the Lord gives you a, a, a thorn in your flesh, things have to change. Okay? Things change. Change. Okay? Change will come. It's inevitable. Okay? Verse 17 on to the close of the chapter in Ephesians chapter 4. This I say therefore, and testify in the Lord, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. <laughs> vanity of their mind, easy believism. Having the understanding darkened, because they ain't saved, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. I say willful ignorance. Because of the blindness of their heart. Ignorance, blindness of their heart. Willful ignorance. Who being past feeling have given themselves over unto lasciviousness to work all uncleanness with greediness. But ye have not so learned Christ. If so that, if so be, that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. Taught by him. In the spirit of truth, he will lead you and guide you into all truth. Okay? He will guide you, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. He will guide you into the scriptures, through the scriptures, and teach you in the scriptures. Okay? Heard him. Uh, speak out loud. If you want to hear God speak to you, speak out loud. If you want to hear it audibly. Okay? Let's continue. That ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful and the lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Renewed. Refreshed. You know, you wake up in the morning, you, you get into prayer and you get into the scriptures. That's a refreshing that's a renewing, you know, you need to renew your mind, okay? You need to be renewed daily. You can't go on a day without the Lord Jesus Christ. If you do, then you're going to have all kinds of problems, aren't you? And that ye put on the new man which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away lying, speak every man truth with his neighbor, for we are members one of another. Be ye angry, and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt, rotten, putrid, corrupt, the, the corrupt there, let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. The corrupt, like a decaying corpse, okay? Something that reeks of putrefaction, okay? 
But that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And the Lord is that Spirit. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, like, you know, clamoring two pots and pans together, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Malice. Put it away in malice. And be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Okay? And now, Ephesians chapter 5, verses 1 under verse 21. Oh, you can't handle this! Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also hath loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become as saints. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. And in everything give thanks for the good and for the evil. For this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, what is their idolatry? Oh, men are lovers of their own selves. Most of the time, the idol that these people have is the one that they're looking at in the mirror. Some actually do have a little dumb Buddhist statue, you know, that they have like that, or, or whatever, the Mary thing, whatever, you know, uh, the Queen of he Heaven, Princess, uh, Princess, uh, Diana of the Ephesians, you know, Semiramis. But uh, it's actually covetous man who is an idolater. You're coveting what? For your own lusts. You are your own idol. With, okay, for this ye know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Those who are idolaters, who are not saved, who are, they are their own idol, they are their own God, Okay? Not broken of self-righteousness. Unsaved. Okay? Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done in them, done of them in secret. Shame what is done of them in secret. Whispering, backbiting, creating multiple accounts, feign themselves as someone else. Uh, that's called lying, by the way. Tending to be someone you're not. Oh, that's that's lying. That's being a hypocrite. Okay? Who knows what these devils do in the background? God does, and then you sure can know their father the devil does. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools who say in their heart there is no God, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Are they not surely evil right now? 
Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. See, brethren, Paul is clearly referring on to being born again, the new man being born again. He's describing it perfectly. And let's go now to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 13 on to verse 21. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, Forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And yes, it is a high calling. It is a high calling to walk this walk of faith. As Paul is our example, it is a high calling to be holy, separate than that. It is quite a high calling. Let us therefore as many as be perfect in heart, a broken and contrite heart, and a heart that fears the Lord is a heart that is perfect. It belongs to the Lord. Not one that uses, well, God knows my heart, to defend your sinful actions. Watch that, brethren. Be thus, uh, let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. And if, any, and if in anything ye be otherwise minded, God shall reveal even this unto you. God will reveal your sins unto you if you have the guts to ask him. That takes, I, I, hey, I'll give this to you. That takes courage. But afterwards, it yieldeth the peaceable fruit of righteousness. Let's continue. Nevertheless, whereto we have already attained, let us walk by the same rule. Let us mind the same thing. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk so as ye have us for an example. For many walk of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even, we even weeping, that they are the enemies of of the cross of Christ. Yeah, you easy believers and heretics, you're the enemies of the cross of Christ because at the cross of Christ is death. It's death. And in order to be in something new, something old has to die. Every single one of you, easy believers and devils, your enemies, of the cross of Christ. You hate the cross of Christ. You talk about a, cro a crossless gospel or a bloodless gospel. Uh, blow it out your nose. You hate the cross because the cross is death. You go to the cross to die. That's why you hate it. That's why you skip over all that nasty stuff and just present believe only. You wicked devils. whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. Their belly, you know. Your belly? Flesh? Whose God is their flesh? Where does the pucerus go when you have it? Huh, Catholic? Goes down into your gut. And what was it? I forget. The Catholics say that for about 15 or 20 minutes, you have Christ in you. Whose God is their belly? And whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. You easy believe some devils. You're all about earthly things. Your God is your belly. 
because the pucerus goes into your belly for 15, 20 minutes or whatever. That's as long as you got Christ in you. You wicked devil coadjutors. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. Here's this thing about change. You know, change is inevitable, which you people hate. Who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. That's a reference unto the, the catching away. Okay? But, there again, change. You encounter the Lord Jesus Christ on his terms. Something's going to change, people. And if there is no change, guess what? You, you need to examine yourself. Okay? I'll put it to you bluntly. If there is no change life after you think you got saved, Saved. It's that simple. Don't believe the lies of these devils. They don't love you. They don't care about you. They want you to go to hell with them. Colossians. Colossians chapter 2. Was that all the way to the end? Yes. Yes, it was. Okay. Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 on to verse 15. Okay? Verses 6 on to verse 15 in Colossians chapter 2. As ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. Change life. Rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therewith with thanksgiving. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, Catholics, after the rudiments of, this, of the world and not after Christ. Rudiments of the world and not after Christ. Rudiments of the world. No brokenness, no sorrow, no calling on the name of the Lord, no fear of the Lord, no change life. Live just as you are with no change. You get your cake and eat it too. No, dear friends. No. Rudiments of the world. Being born again is just for the Jews. Have, have you not seen that Paul is obviously preaching a new birth, a death, and a new birth? Okay? You know how you uh, Catholic, Jesuit, coadjutor devils really love the phoenix, you know, with the, the rebirth from death kind of thing? You know, the... Look into the occult if you're interested about the phoenix. Okay? With these, the Catholics that kind of, and the Jesuits, they love that stuff. Okay? Yeah. 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 But yet, they're against change life. These easy believers, some devils. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? Hmm. Let's continue. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And ye are complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power, in whom also ye are circumcised with the circumcision made without hands. That circumcision is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Okay? That is the circumcision made without hands. In putting off the body of the sins of the flesh, by the circumcision of Christ. See, the verse tells you what that is. The circumcision of Christ. Christ in you. Sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? Buried with him in baptism. 
where also ye are, pay attention, where ye, wherein also ye are risen with him through the faith of the operation of God who hath raised him from the dead. You died to yourself, to sin, to this world. You are reborn, born again of Christ Jesus and he lives within you. That circumcision made without hands, see. And you being dead in your sins and uncircumcision of your flesh, hath he quickened together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us, which was contrary to us, and took it out of the way, nailing it to his cross. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Clearly referring and talking about being born again. Okay? Clearly. It's, it's, it's obvious, is it not? Okay? Now, let's see. Can you, can, you, can you handle this? Now, Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 17. If ye then be risen with Christ, if you are saved, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affections on things above, not on things on the earth. For we are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, kill, put down, suppress. Therefore, your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. This part is uh, unintentional, um, but uh, what we're going to talk about right now uh, does not come from me. Uh, a brother of mine mentioned this to me, and so this right now is going to be collaborative because a brother mentioned this to me. Covetousness, which is idolatry. Are not all these things in verse 5 idolatry? Look at it. Look at it. And this, like I said, a brother brought this to my attention. This one wasn't given. I didn't come up with this one myself. A brother of mine uh, mentioned this to me. And brother, I hope, uh, hope you don't have fun with this. Okay, look at this. Fornication. What are you idolizing when you fornicate? Some flesh? Satisfy who? Yourself. Uncleanness. You're unclean when you commit fornication. And is, doesn't sin just look so beautiful to all of you lost people? Inordinate affection. Having affection in the wrong areas. Having an affection for someone else's wife. Something like that. Having affection, a lust for uh, sinful things that uh, the scriptures clearly are against. What is the idol there? The object or the satisfaction you will get from acquiring such things. Evil concupiscence, wicked, animalistic desire and lust. Again, what is the end result of acquiring these things? To satisfy your flesh. And covetousness, wanting all this stuff, which is idolatry. Isn't all of that Idolatry? It is. Thank you, brother. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. You hear the gospel, you reject it, you are a child of disobedience. Because all of those things in verse 5 are idolatry because even though they are different aspects of it the end how perfect the Jesuit motto the end justifies the means doesn't it 
The end justifies the means, doesn't it? With fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness. Which is idolatry. That's all idolatry. Why? Because the end justifies the means. What is the end? Whose God is their own belly. Mortify, kill, put down, suppress. Verse 7, in the, in the which ye also walked some time, when ye lived in, in them. But now ye also put off all these. Put off. Uh, being born again? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Don't those things usually usually result when someone is going after any one of those in verse 5? When they can't get their way, when they can't satisfy their belly, their flesh? Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds. <laughs> the old man is dead. And you are risen again, born again, to newness of life. Okay? Paul was describing being born again. He's talking about being born again. Again, he just never said born again. Okay? Born again, being a new creature, is just for the Jews? Oh, gee, I wonder who would want you to believe that. Oh, that'd be Satan and his church, Roman Catholicism, and his army, the Jesuit order, that manipulates, runs, and controls all of these fake whatevers out there. Okay? Gee, I wonder. Why not one? Picking up at verse 9. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. Renewed. You need to be renewed every single day. Do you not? What happens when you don't renew yourself in the scriptures, in prayer? Okay? You can't, it's not a, <laughs> it's not like the steel of the Jesuit poniard. Oh, uh, one and done, and then you die. No, no. It's a continual renewing, okay? You can't reach, God forbid, how can anyone of the church of the living God say in their walk, well, I have reached the plateau of how far I can go in knowing my Lord through the scriptures or knowing the scriptures, huh? You need to be renewed. You need to be reminded to, hey, don't touch that. Well, I already know that. Renew yourself. It's a refreshing. It's a renewing, okay? You of the church of the living God, you know you shouldn't do certain sins. What happens if you aren't renewed to that knowledge of, hey, I told you a couple years ago, don't do that. What, you forget what I told you? See? See, brethren, that's why it is imperative that you stay in the book, that you stay in the scriptures every day, every day. Don't you even, don't you even try to give me any excuse why you can't be in the scriptures every day. At least, at the least, a proverb a day. You ought to do more than that. Yes, you ought to. But, you know, don't give me no excuses. Well, I'm too busy. Liar. You're a liar. I've known men who have farms, children, getting up at 2 in the morning, okay, to read the scriptures. And what are you going to tell me? No, no. See, that's one of those things. I, I you know, when when a brother or something's like, Brad, you know, Brother Brad, I'm, I'm not in the scriptures, uh, you know, every day. Why? Well, I'm uh, tough. Read the scriptures daily. But I'm too busy. Shut up. 
Shut up. There isn't a good excuse for you not to be in the scriptures. Hey, if it's not in the morning, then in the afternoon. If not in the afternoon, then at night. It doesn't matter. Here a little, there a little, line upon line, precept upon precept. Okay? Let's continue. Okay? Verse 11. Where there is neither Jew, Greek nor Jew. This is talking about salvation, not culturally. Okay? Circumcision or uncircumcision. Barbarian, Scythian, bond or free. But Christ is all and in all. Okay? Talking about salvation, not culturally. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, talking to save people, so also do ye. Those of you of my brothers of the Church of the Living God, I have no problem with any of you of the Church of the Living God. Okay, I might not agree with you. I might not actually like you, but I've got no problem with you if you are my brother or sister. Okay, I might not like you. You're my brother, my sister, I love you. That's the way that works. Okay, now that doesn't mean that you should hold grudges being saved against lost people. You know why? You hold a grudge, it's going to consume you. It's going to eat you up. You're just going to want to dedicate yourself to get even. It's not up to you to get even. Vengeance is his. He will repay. You keep a grudge against a lost person, or you keep a grudge in general, you're, you're going to be eaten up, boy. You're going to, your stomach's going to be knotted. You're going to be consumed. You're going to make the object of your um, vengeance your idol. And look at these devils. I rest my case. <laughs> all right, where were we? Verse 14. And above all these things put on charity, self-sacrifice, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Yeah, you're going to listen to this wicked CCM doing all and whatsoever ye do in word or deed do all in the name of our of the Lord Jesus Christ giving thanks to God and the Father by him it's talking about putting on a new man it's talking about being born again brethren okay it's clearly talking about being born again okay first Thessalonians chapter 4. Verses 1 under verse 12. I told you this was going to be tedious. Okay? 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 1 under verse 12. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification, getting sin and garbage out of your life, okay? That ye should abstain from fornication. Now he's referring to physical, but there it's deeper than that. Spiritual fornication. How do you do that? Putting wicked things before your eyes, listening to wicked things, looking at things, going places where you shouldn't. Okay? That every one of you should know how to possess his, his vessel in sanctification and honor because you are bought with a price. You are not your own. 
This belongs to the Lord. Not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles which know not God, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. For God hath, <laughs> for God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. God doesn't save you, so you can remain in sin and remain sitting there. Holiness, being separate than that. Okay? He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit, which we are sealed by. Okay? Meaning, once saved, always saved. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. And indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more, and that ye study to be quiet, and to do your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded, commanded you that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that ye may have lack of nothing. Is that not plainly obvious, talking about being born again? Do you see? Paul never said born again. But he sure did write about it in detail, in depth, in minuscule detail, totally describing, preaching the new birth, being born again, putting on the new man. Okay? Don't let these evil, uh, easy believism devils deceive you. Okay? Now, let's finish this with 1 Timothy chapter 1. Then we'll be done. Okay, then we'll be done. Okay? 1 Timothy chapter 1. Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the commandments of God our Savior and Lord Jesus Christ, which is our hope. And he is our hope. We're waiting for the blessed hope, the redemption of the purchased possession, you know, the catching away. Unto Timothy, my own son, in the faith, Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and Jesus Christ our Lord. I besought thee to abide still at Ephesus, Ephesus when I went into Macedonia, that thou mightest charge some that they teach no other doctrine. Neither give heed to fables and endless genealogies. My young brother from Norway, remember that, please. Remember that, dear brother. Okay? which minister questions rather than godly edifying which is in faith so do okay keep that in mind now the end of the commandment is charity self-sacrifice out of a pure heart a pure heart is a heart that belongs to god and a pure heart is broken the blueness of a wound cleanseth away evil so do stripes the inward parts of the belly okay a pure heart is, number one, broken. Number two, contrite. Number three, fearful of the Lord. That's a pure heart, boy. Now, the end of the commandment is charity out of a pure heart and of a good conscience and of faith unfeigned, from which some having swerved, having turned aside unto vain, jangling, desiring to be teachers of the law, understanding neither what they say nor whereof they affirm. But we know that the law is good if a man use it lawfully. Adhere to the law. Okay? Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedience, for the ungodly and for sinners, 
for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers and men and manslayers. Why is that? Because when you have that circumcision made without hands, our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, our Father, the Holy Ghost, who dwells within you, he's the one who wrote the law, okay? Okay? For whoremongers, for, uh, okay, wait, beg your pardon. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine, which contrary to sound doctrine, everything that these easy believers and preachers and teachers try to teach, okay? According to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, which was committed to my trust, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for that he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. Um, Paul had a changed life. Paul preached a changed life. Paul preached being born again. He just didn't say it. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom everyone is chief. Of whom I am chief. See another thing that you easy believers and heretics do. We're all sinners. What about you? Oh, yeah, I'm a sinner. Are you the chief of sinners? Well, yeah. Really? What about Dahmer? I'm better than Dahmer. See? You see? Someone of the church of the living God. Guess what? I'm worse than Dahmer. I'm worse than Nebuchadnezzar. I'm worse than Manasseh. I'm a sinner who is chief. Personal accountability and responsibility for your sins and actions. When you come to our Lord, that's why brokenness is imperative. That's why He commands brokenness, contrition, fear. That's why He demands it in order for Him to save you. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Right there verse 16 Paul is saying I'm the example. Follow me. Not being that he had his own cult or whatever. No. He's our example of how to follow Jesus today in this dispensation. Time of the Gentiles. To the Jew first and also to the Greek, which is a Gentile. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. This charge I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou by them mightest war a good warfare, holding faith and a good conscience, which some having which some having put away concerning faith, have made shipwreck, of whom is Hymenius and Alexander, whom I have delivered unto Satan, that they may learn not to blaspheme. So, 
as we see, dear friends, dear friends, Church of the Living God, as we can plainly see, okay, we can plainly, obviously see that Paul the Apostle clearly, obviously, evidently, clearly, clearly preached, number one, a changed life, which was number two, meaning being born again. Paul preached a death and a rebirth, being born again. Something to be new, something old has to die and go away. Okay? Paul preached being born again. He did not say being born again or born again. No, he did not. But he preached it. He taught it. He lived it. Okay? Again, like I said, the easy believism heretic has the biggest of all their problems with the changed life. Because they want to keep you who fall for it in sin. So when we, the church of the living God, are redeemed, resurrected, caught up, and you're left behind with them, they're going to be saying, just believe during the time of Jacob's trouble. And when you take the mark of the beast, you're done. Okay? So, um, on to the brother that uh, requested this. I hope this helps. Um, uh, give this to whomever it may, who may need it. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so very much, my brothers and sisters. Um, thank you to all of you who have prayed for us, for me. Please continue to keep me and my wife in your prayers. Um, please continue to um, pray for each other. Please continue to keep your brothers and sisters in Australia in your prayers. It's getting crazy over there. Pray for one another. Love one another. Okay? Thank you. I love you. I'll see you in the next video.